for a few seconds, just wait for the attendees to build up and we will get into it. Just watching those attendees climb. Right, um, so good afternoon to everyone and you know, welcome to this afternoon's presentation on the John Paul College Kindergarten. My name's Kevin Miles. Um, I'm a committee member with the Learning Environments Australasia Queensland chapter and your host for this evening. Um, so on behalf of Learning Environments Australasia and my fellow committee members in Queensland, we'd firstly like to say a big thank you to our sponsors um, our major sponsor being uh, Wood Furniture and then supporting sponsor with Interface. Um, so welcome to you all, welcome to our members, our non-members from all locations around the country. Um, welcome. Just an, an introduction, uh, John Paul's College uh, New Kindergarten, the building extension was jointly an overall winner in our 2020 LEA. Um, awards for Excellence in Educational Design. Uh, the project imaginatively reflects the principles of Reggio Emilia, the Italian approach to teaching and learning with an Australian context. Reggio Emilia is an early learning education style with values children as capable as, and resilient. Uh, it emphasises hands-on discovery uh, learning that allows children to actively engage with all senses I'm guided by educators rather than directed. Uh, the kindy environment was initially designed to be like a third teacher, so after the teachers and, and students. Supporting the children's imaginative capabilities and express themselves in many ways. The LA, uh, LEA judges uh, citation for the awards was that John Paul College Kindergarten is a delightful expression of Reggio Emilio philosophies in an Australian context. Transparent, child-centred, visually connected interiors brings abundant sunshine into the building. Deep verandas create shade for outdoor learning play areas. The Reggio Piazza is reimagined as an outdoor green heart for the centre and antlers, created to suggest a nest and burrow, to provoke wonder and curiosity. This child-centred environment is indeed the third teacher in the local context. I'm just going to play a short video for you all now.
So just um, a bit on uh, Dikey Richards. So Dikey Richards is a, a Brisbane-based based cross-disciplinary uh, design practice. Uh, education is a key focus with the design teams working across early education, special schools, primary, secondary and tertiary spaces. The Dikey Richards team includes architects, urban designers, planners and interior designers. The practice also brings well-honed collaborative design workshop skills uh, to its work in education. The co-design or inquiry by design processes are used to consult and engage stakeholders in projects of all scales, uh, from complex campus master plans to adaptive reuse and refurbishment commissions. Uh, Dikey Richards led the design and project in collaboration with a passionate team at John Paul College uh, with the Landscape Architects Aspect Studios. Dikey Richards also acknowledges the inputs from Bly Tanner, who looked after the civil and structural engineering, and Dr. Megan Gibson from QUT uh, for contributing early childhood and Radio Emilia uh, education expertise. Now, I am going to uh, introduce our speakers. Um, so joining us this afternoon to present the John Paul College Kindergarten and to unfold the learning approaches that were taken. Um, there is Leanne Summit from John Paul College. Leanne has worked in the early childhood industry for 25 years, the past 17 years at the John Paul College. And Leanne was integral in establishing the foundation kindergarten for John Paul College in 2004. And since that time has established and mentored the programs in early childhood center. And uh, she's passionate about the rights of children and the experience uh, to experience meaningful and engaging childhood journey full of possibilities and potential. Leanne's experience with the fundamental principles of Reggio Emilia philosophy has enabled her to establish the learning programs at the college, centered on a strong and powerful image of the child, the role of the teacher in the learning alongside a child, the pedagogy of listening and the environment as a third teacher. Uh, Leanne has seen the growth of the kindergarten in her 17 years at the college and was privileged to work with Dyke Richards in the design of the new kindergarten facilities. Next, we have Cameron Davis from Dyke Richards. Cameron's a director at Dyke Richards, an architect and urban designer, um, project director for the John Paul College Kindergarten Design. Cam's been working with John Paul College for more than 10 years. Uh, the new kindergarten building was identified as a priority project in the school master plan, um, also completed by Dyke Richards. Cam led the design team and facilitated the collaborative design workshops with the school exploring how the values of the kindy and the Italian Reggio Emilio philosophy uh, could be embedded and lived through the buildings, designs and surrounding environments. Next, we have Magna Kiyowski. Um, Magna is Dikey Richards Interior Design Manager and is involved in almost all of Dikey Richards educational work. Uh, for this project, Magna worked on the education, ed, worked with the educators and the architectural team uh, developing an understanding of the Reggio Emilia philosophy and its values, uh, creating a rich range of experimental, social and emotional possibilities for the children. In each of the environments within the kindergarten, Magna's focus is on the opportunities for human connection and how the built environment can support and enable the essential experience, uh, sensitive to the architectural context, contemporary in its materiality, approach and responsive to the budgetary and functional imperatives. Um, now, just before I hand over to our speakers, um, you are able to post questions um, through the chat function down the bottom of your screen. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. I will throw over to Leanne now, who will start the presentation. Sorry, I was muted, I think. Um, thank you, thank you, Kevin, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, for, for me, this is a real privilege to share the educational journey that we've been on and this project um, with Dyke Richards. As, as Kevin has mentioned, um, John Paul College Kindergarten has an established 17 year history working with the Reggio Emilia Educational Project. Um, so throughout this whole experience, it was important for us to ensure that that philosophy um, that is at the heart of all that we do 
um, was respected and reflected in the, the new buildings. So to give everybody some context, if you're not from Brisbane, um, John Paul College is located south of Brisbane. We are a co-educational college, um, K-12, and we also have an early learning centre that is um, co-located on the same site as well. We have adopted an Italian Reggio Emilia inspired educational philosophy across the service, um, which is also in our early learning centre as well. Currently, we have 137 children attending kindergarten um, across the week and over 1,700 students enrolled in John Paul College K-12. So that gives you um, some context um, for, for the college and, and the way that it um, is situated at the moment. So we are one of the largest in, in our area. Um, the kindergarten, I've, I've been at kindy now for 17 years, so I have seen um, the journey grow from uh, uh, being a small two-classroom two service with 44 children attending a um, part-time program to now an established five-room facility with um, our 137 children attending four full-time classes and two part-time classes. So um, it, it's been quite an amazing journey and one that I'm very proud of um, and one that I hope uh, we can continue to build on into the future. So um, I want to talk to everyone a little bit about the educational philosophy. So when we started this journey, um, the passion in me wanted to ensure that all the stakeholders invo involved understood um, the educational philosophy behind the principles and practices that we do um, at the kindergarten. So the kindergarten has a long history of working with the Reggio Emilia Educational Project. We have a strong belief in children being competent and capable learners and the way that they interact and engage in the environment to bring about possibility, to bring about um, their project work and their investigations is something that has been established over a long period of time. We have a strong belief that children should, should um, be afforded um, the opportunity to work with intelligent materials, to have access to those materials and to be able to engage with those materials in the environment to bring about their project work, to explore um, their queries and their investigations, and to make visible the, the learning that is happening in the classroom. So when we, when we embarked on this project, it was really um, important for me that I was able to share that with um, Cameron and the team here at Dikey Richards, and, 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 and so that that could be reflected in, in our kindergarten building. Um, very, very fortunate that Cam and the team visited the kindergarten, they came out, they looked at the way that the children were engaging in the environment, how they used the spaces, the materials that were being used. So they had a really good understanding about how our, our kindergarten program worked and how the children engaged in that space. Um, so um, then they they asked, you know, what, what what's the program? What, what's the project brief? How how are we going to facilitate this project for you? So we needed two classrooms, um, but essential to that, we already had three established classrooms. So it was really important that they were able to um, build two classrooms that integrated into the existing buildings. So two classrooms that had uh, flexible arrangements that had integrated pathways that connected the community that was already in existence was essential to the way um, that the building project was going to, to exist for us. Um, we also, one of, one of the key aspects of, of the new design was the atelier. So we wanted designated spaces where children could use those materials and those resources um, in ways to document their learning, to um, to show us their thinking and their understanding um, in, in a space um, that was dedicated for that. So that was one of the, um, the biggest, uh, I guess, the, the thing that I wanted most from this project, but I got so much more. Um, we, we, we asked them to give us um, elements of light, colour and reflection because that was already in existence in our in our current kindergarten buildings, and we wanted that reflected in our in our kindergarten as well. And we wanted um, the outdoor environment to be um, a space where children could flow um, in 
in and out of. Um, it could be part of the learning program. The children could take learning from inside to outside. It involved uh, playgrounds, but more importantly, involved the building of community garden um, and a community kitchen inside that um, was purposeful to that garden being built. So we had um, a few little um, points for, for the brief for Dyke Richards, and it, um, it is amazing um, the result that's been achieved. I feel in this project, and I think it needs to be said now, um, that the voices of everybody, everybody were heard in, in this project. So from children um, to teachers, to our educational teams at John Paul College, to the architects, to even to our families, everybody was involved in this project. And I think that's why um, the result has been as amazing as it is. So I will, uh, I'll leave you now. I'm going to hand over to Cam and he's going to talk to you about the design and the um, process. And I'm going to uh, return later and talk to you about the amazing outcome that we've managed to achieve. So over to you, Cam. Thanks, Leanne. Uh, I mean, all the architects who are listening will know that great projects start with great briefs. And um, we're really fortunate to have that with this, with this particular project. Um, this was our first foray into the Reggio Emilia um, principles. And, and, and I'm just going to, before I pass you on to Magda, I'll just talk a little bit about how we adopted and adapted those to see uh, this Australian context, but also um, JPC's kindy program. I, you know, for us as architects, um, Reggio provides this really strong spatial conceptual framework to work within. Um, it's, it's kind of unsurprising that the namesake of it is this stunning Italian town in Italy that's got this really rich tapestry of urban spaces. Um, but, you know, having said that, it does need to adapt to our context um, and certainly to the site and to John Paul College. Um, within the Australian context, there's this really significant emphasis on, on the natural environment. Um, it's not only valued by our communities, but it's actually often integrated with our urban spaces and centres. And so our understanding of civic space is quite different here than it is in Europe. Um, the main streets and awnings in Australia are sort of more so the backdrop of civic interactions rather than plazas and and, and piazzas, but, and, and, you know, some of those paradigms really kind of help to inform and temper our approach to the common areas within the kindy. Uh, built form obviously needs to be contextual. Um, the internal and external spaces in Europe are really quite distinctive and there's really distinctive boundaries between them. Um, but obviously here in Australia, there's a lot more ambiguity. There's all of this layering that we have within our internal and external environments. And um, something that's as simple to describe as a veranda actually kind of sets up a whole lot of social constructs and settings that uh, are really kind of part of our culture. Um, and, and, and that all informs something that's quite complex. Um, and then when we dig deeper into the, into the Reggio framework, um, there's this intimate engagement that we have with space, with texture, with breeze, with sunlight. Um, I think in a really interesting aspect of it, and it, as architects, we're not often uh, grappling with smell, you know, but smell is a really fundamental experience that we have in spaces. And, um, and it obviously also relates to a whole lot of memories that we might hold as well. So um, it was actually kind of quite interesting to grapple with that within the architecture. You know, what, what's the smell of materials? What are the smells of the activities that are going on there? And how's that supporting a learning outcome? Um, for us, and, and this is the case for a lot of the work that we do, the most effective way to unpack all of that is, is through design collaboration and, and through design thinking and, and also through critical thinking. Um, we obviously engage with, as Leanne said, we've engaged with the kindergarten staff, um, past students and work experience students, um, as in this photo, um, in, in the design workshop process. Um, we're also lucky to have um, Megan Gibson, who's in the early learning program at QUT, who've done a uh, a thesis on a PhD rather on on Reggio and so um, 
and and so all of those inputs really just allowed our team to I guess challenge ourselves around what the what the outcome could be at the kindy and, and what we might be able to achieve. Um, the final plan form of the kindy is actually quite simple. You know, it's um, it's got a generous veranda. It's um, it's got this visual connection with the with the broader kindy, but also the broader campus of John Paul College. Um, the it's got a you know a central um, uh, I guess services area, which is not unusual for this for, for those sorts of facilities and those plan forms. Um, but interestingly, the external relationships are really the ones that are probably most critical, and 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 those are also providing some familiarity for the kids in terms of their own environments at at home, but also setting up pathways for them to advance through the college in the future. So there's visual connection between the kindy. And the um, and the prep and year one spaces within the college, so that's that's less of a mystery for these kids as they move through um, at John Paul College. Um, the connection to landscapes clearly really important, and the the kindy really sort of expands out an existing plaza space that that was already within the early learning centre, um, and but it also does sit on the edge of the early learning centre and. And so in that context, it's, um, it's, I guess it's sort of feathering the edge, if you like, between the more intense urban spaces within the ELC and then the natural vegetation, which is part of the John Paul College campus. And the John Paul College campus is, is set within a, a natural environment in Daisy Hill. Um, so the landscape in the kindy is both Arcadian, but also natural. Um, and we're trying to set it up in a fairly unforced way. Um, and, and, and therefore providing these incidental opportunities for the kids to engage with it. Um, the, and you can see a picture of the, the landscape and the plaza that we've set up, which is more of a green heart in this particular instance for obvious reasons. Um, the, the veranda is, is you know, clearly an important and central idea for, and, and a really important space for any, anywhere in Southeast Queensland. Um, it's not just a passive design element, uh, you know, the veranda um, is also a programmable learning space for the children and, and so it needs to contain a lot of different interactions throughout the day and, um, and, and it also needs to accentuate those seasonal differences that we get throughout the year um, and, and also changes in light throughout the day as well. Um, once inside the kindy, the spaces are layered but connected and that was quite important. Um, so there's this structure that supports quite meaningful engagement between the, between the students, the building between each other and educators. Um, but the layering also enables different degrees of, of student participation in the learning program, um, yet still allowing them to be kind of constantly in contact with their cohort, um, which we know is quite important in any education setting in actual fact, not just kindergarten. Um, the Magda will talk more about the materials later, but you know the general philosophy was that the lighting, the materials, the texture, and, and colour is deliberately very, very natural. Um, the material selections we're just trying to be honest, um, and but also reflect the natural complexity uh, of colour that you might get in nature. You know, rather than just the I guess the, the typical primary colours that you might kind of see. So those primary colours and those brighter colours are more coming from the children or coming from the uh, subtropical landscape and flowering that might be happening out in the gardens and then being brought in into the space. Um, and so the children and their creative creativity is actually kind of pro providing that kind of more vivid colour that we see. Um, the two ateliers, which, which Maggie will go into in, in a little bit more detail, and, and Leanne's already mentioned that you know, they're designed for focused activity and, um, and so the lighting and acoustics of those two spaces um, actually support that end. Um, the spatial ideas obviously reference our vernacular architecture and they, and they reference links to nature and we're really excited to hear that the children are using these spaces quite independently. Um, that's a really fantastic outcome and, um, and, and Leanne will probably talk to that a little bit more later on. So um, 
I'm not going to sort of steal Magna Sunder here because you know she's put an enormous amount of work into the finishes and the and the way that the building has gone together internally, um, and and she'll give you that detail and some of those internal spatial responses. So I'm going to give Magda. Thanks, Cam. Um, hi everyone, I'm Magda. I'm the of the interior design on the Jack B. C. Kinsey project. I feel very honoured um, for the opportunity. Thank you, LEA, and thank you all um, for signing in and listening to our story. Is that yep. So the JBC Kindergarten consists of two teaching and learning spaces, and they each have a unique identity and are characterised by an internal atelier. Its form references our vernacular architecture, and they are affectionately named the nest and the borough. These names were inspired by uh, the topography of the site and the way the building hugs its landscape. The site slopes slightly upwards as you approach from the entry. Um, so with the lower set atelier being the borough and the one further up the slope being the nest. The borough um, brings up notions of safety, warmth, containment and protection. This intimate setting offers focused respite with apertures and reflective surfaces which provide a visual connection with adjacent spaces and the landscape. Uh, the, the borough is a sunken creative studio separated from the rest of the room and its activities. It's separated by timber buttons which built a natural light, they add warmth and texture, evoking a sensory experience. The mirrored circular discs, which you see there on that image, um, on, they're on both sides of the timber screen and they allow opportunities to see yourself and observe reflections captured and framed at different heights to inspire wonder and curiosity. We know the surrounding environment has great potential to inspire children. The design of the classrooms supports diverse ways of thinking, playing, exploring and doing. The spaces are layered yet connected. A clear structure supports meaningful engagement and creates opportunity for children to pursue their different interests. The internal materials were selected to maximise acoustic properties and manage noise. Finishes, lighting, textures and colours are very robust, yet natural, and the palette is restrained with the intention of encouraging children to delve deeper into their interests rather than dominating their senses. The interior reinforces the sensory experience through the use of authentic materiality and tools that invoke a sense of discovery and delight. <clears throat> And similarly, the nest references notions of safety and protection. The nest walls envelop and clearly articulate the intimate space beyond. JPC's program is strongly art and nature based, and this interior is dedicated to painting and creative exploration. The internal walls of the nest offer opportunity for um, an organized and contained way to display children's art and document the progression of creative thinking. The house-like structure of the nest punctuates the flow of the single level space and the window invites visual connection and imaginative play. And this all contributes to the layering, layered learning experience. An internal planning is resolved to encourage and facilitate collaboration, communication, exploration, as you can see in that image there, the interiors are uh, light filled and naturally ventilated and the, general glaze, uh, the generous glazing suites not only ensure connection to the outdoors, but as the light changes throughout the day, beautiful shadows and shapes are cast um, on the floor and on the joinery, heightening the sensory experience within. The interiors are designed to be flexible, but they're arranged um, in an open plan with a clearly articulated um, zone. And all these zones are orderly and well equipped with storage to minimize clutter and encourage children to be the carers of the space. The floor uh, is colored in earthy tones and acknowledges the topography of the site. As in the home, the kitchen is the heart of the kindy interior. 
The highly textural timber bench is made of a single slab of live edge timber with evident growth rings, sapwood, and hardwood, which Cam personally selected. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And without compromising teachers' accessibility needs, the front bench is lowered to the children's natural level to facilitate interaction in the kitchen in an active, home-like way. The kitchen takes on the finishes that are familiar uh, for the children within their own homes, while secure areas are concealed and colour camouflaged to ensure children's safety and support, um, and they support the teaching program. Large and flexible veranda spaces invite easy transition between indoors and out. And this outdoor room can be used as an alternative learning and play space. You can see in that image, the entries are articulated by a portal-like frame, which is um, clad in a plywood finish. And these clearly define the arrival zone, where drop-offs and pickups can be done efficiently without bottlenecking. While announcing the entry, these portals offer expansive views in and out, always connecting with the landscape. The form of the portals is matched inside and outside, and, um, uh, and this was done to, as a way to avoid overcrowding during busy times. Uh, the portals were designed to uh, contain bag racks for the children to easily access their belongings. There's a hand washing station, um, a sign in book for parents, and the teacher parent communication board. And they also offer um, an opportunity for a display um, akin to an entry, entry credenza in a home. So, JBC Kindy offers um, a variety of spaces for a layered learning experience, which is meaningfully embedded in the environment, supporting wonder, curiosity, independence, and to foster connections among the children. Now, Me. I'm done. I will hand over to Leanne for the fun bit um, as she'll describe the project outcomes and how the children are engaging in the space. Yeah. So this is the fun part. Um, it and it's, it, it's, a, it's a part that I talk about um, with um, a lot of joy. Um, most of the time. So I'll talk first about the ateliers and you've heard from Cameron and Magda about um, them effectively being uh, named the burrow and the nest and the children will often uh, use that terminology themselves and going down to the burrow to work on my clay work. So when we when we asked um, Cameron and the team to design ateliers in our new kindergarten spaces, we um, envisaged spaces, spaces where children could collaborate together um, independently they could engage deeply in their work, um, a space where they were able to return to their work over, over different days, um, adding more complexity to that work until they were satisf satisfied and finished um, that their work really showed their understanding and their thinking. And I think the most significant thing that has come from the atelier is that that is actually happening. We have children that are working over two, three, four days um, to show us their understanding, to work on their project work. Um, and they know that um, it's uninterrupted time for them. The burrow, the acoustics in the burrow, it is serene. So um, when, when you're in that space, it, it, the children are, are very focused. They're very, they concentrate deeply on what they're working with. Um, and, and when you walk down the steps and, and it, it's almost it's almost hushed, you know. You're walking into the burrow, a bit like a bunny, um, and you know, and and you look at what the children are doing, and and it's joyful. So I'm I'm going to show you some uh, some photos um, just of the, the, some of the setups in the the ateliers. So you can see that even that that engagement with with light and color. Um, is very reflective in, in the atelier. So even just putting some of those rainbow blocks up on our window and then the, the reflection on the floor and the shadows that were coming on the floor, this in, um, invited a lot of um, stories and exploration about rainbows and colours. And, um, and the children, because it's a flexible space, started to move when the shadows and the colours changed, they started to move the easels so that the um, colour might project onto their paper. So there was lots of investigations just by that one incidental um, little action by a teacher to place um, 
the window blocks on the window because it was facing in the right direction and, and things like that. So you can sort of see in the photographs that they are organised spaces um, and in these spaces we have spent many, many, many hours and time with the children just to explicitly teach them skills, skill building, you know, how am I going to use the clay, how am I going to use the wire, all of those sorts of things. Um, and, and this happens in that space, that, that space that's designated for children. So. Um, we had an experience with geckos wildlife and this just gives you a little bit of an example of, of what's been happening, my favourite pictures. Um, and the children were able to see and observe um, and, and touch these creatures and, and after they'd had that experience we had lots of photographs and lots of discussion about it and, and they were invited to show us their um, understanding about their favourite creatures. So that involved lots of planning by the children. Um, they decided which creature they were going to create and what materials they were going to use and how that was going to look. And then they went into the ateliers and they started working on these projects and it wasn't scaffolded a lot by teachers. And I know some, some people out there, especially from um, the education fields, were looking at that saying, there's no way a four-year-old can do that. But there is a way because they're competent and capable children and they've got the skills to use these intelligent materials in many different ways. So when Cam flicks to the next slide, this little friend um, worked for five days, so a full-time child, and was making, was making her lizard. So over that time, um, she'd made it out of clay and, and she came back the following day and she wanted to um, add a bit of colour. So um, she got the paint out and she got some sand as well and she added that. She came back the following day and felt that she needed to make an environment for, for her creature. So then she went outdoors and she just got, got, gathered some rocks and some sand and came back and made the environment for her creature. So the ateliers have far exceeded what I could ever imagine and now, I'm looking at the possibilities of what's currently in kindergarten and, um, and thinking how, how can I create that in the structure that we've already got. Um, and I've got some really um, big ideas that I'm sure to share with someone very soon. So <laughs> um, that's just a little bit about the atelier. So the environment as a third teacher it was really important that we had flexible learning spaces and, and in these spaces the children are designing and redesigning their environments all the time. So there's um, natural engagement in these spaces and um, just incidental encounters happen and it changes the way that that piece of furniture or that layer, um, the function of that. So we had a, we had a, a story where, um, you know, I was just playing with someone in the room and the light came flooding through the window and all of a sudden all of these shadows were emerging on the bench just below where they keep their little bags and, and um, belongings. And all of a sudden there was a lot of chatter about, um, you know, um, the different shadows that were being formed on, on the bench top. You know, I just casually um, went and got a clipboard and some white paper and I just sat it just underneath some of the blocks that they were using and some of the little animal creatures that they were using. And the children then um, looked, at, looked at the shadows and they um, moved them around. They went down to the atelier, they went down to the burrow um, brought back some pens and then they started drawing the shadows. So then this became um, a little project for the children because they started wondering what's happening to these shadows um, throughout the day and why do they just disappear. So um, encounters in this, in this flexible learning space, in this environment that is the third teacher, were plentiful in this new design and, and things that we didn't think um, would happen ha ha have occurred and probably too numerous for me to um, talk about. <laughs> all the time but and the and then the veranda spaces so our beautiful verandas um, have created so much possibility for the children um, they they change that space um, according to their interests and, and the projects that they're working on so the photos that are on the screen at the moment um, this came about from um, our garden we had lots and lots of marigolds in the garden and the children were picking those so you know we went through that whole story about um, the purpose of the marigolds in the garden to keep away the pests you know and and this led to their home gardens and what flowers and things they have in their home gardens so they started bringing their flowers in so as teachers we obviously provided the vases and um and things like that and vessels for the children to put their flowers in and then they bought the the materials from the atelier so they're bring out the little easels every day of bringing out different 
kinds of drawing tools, and they started creating their images of, of what they could see. Even the wildlife came down to join in. So you can see our little minor bird has come down and he's having a little nibble. Um, and the children um, really enjoyed that one little friend decided that he, he was going to start drawing the minor bird while the minor bird just sat there casually engaging in the space with the children. So these natural encounters that are occurring um, are, are beautiful for children and, and, and like I always say, it's as it should be. So um, the flexible spaces are something that um, has really been a successful outcome from, uh, from this project, Cam, so thank you. Um, when we go to the next screen, you'll see um, the natural environment. So part of the uh, project when we were planning this with um, Cam and the team, the, the children um, had a voice in, in what this was going to look like. So they had envisioned a space that had uh, ropes to climb on like monkeys and, and logs to step across and lots of wooden beams to, you know, to balance on. And um, in, in the course of this, uh, this project work, that has come to life. So um, if you flick to the next screen, you'll see images of um, the children that They've now got their um, stepping stone logs that they, they transition across. They have ropes um, on beautifully carved um, wooden poles um, that they can swing like monkeys. Uh, they have a little teepee structure that they change daily um, uh, with coverings and, and different things because that's, uh, it can be a cubby one day, a shop another day, um, or my mindful place, that's the latest, the mindful place <laughs> where I can just sit and think. So these flexible spaces outside are, are a joy um, and, we're, and we're very thankful for those. Um, and here you can see that they're, they're balancing again. So that's two different spaces, balancing on the logs and balancing across the stepping stones. So these were all um, elements that were added into this, this project um, because of the voice of children. That's what they had envisaged. That's, that's what they would want. So um, we, we tried the best way we could to put that in. You would have seen previously in a slide, we had um, um, a water pump and a dry creek bed as well. Um, in the photograph and we've put that in and this this connection with water sand um, has created lots of possibilities for children so currently they have redesigned this area as well um, and it's now a dam uh, with an opening so that water can be released and they can capture it again so that's been a little uh, project in the making adults working alongside children. We had some adults going, ah, they're changing the design. I said, yep, they are, they've got a, they've got a purpose. <laughs> it's got meaning to them. They're trying to collect all that water, store it, um, use it for some other play projects, release it out a little bit later into the garden. So um, this, this connection with nature, this connection with the materials that have been um, provided for the children has really generated a lot of curiosity, a lot of investigation um, and, the children have shown just so much appreciation for what they have um, in this space. And, and I love, personally love, uh, that they had a voice in what this looked like. Um, now, moving on, um, community kitchen and garden. So I could talk about this forever, haven't got forever. Um, so when we gave the design brief, we talked about having um, uh, low level garden beds that the children could access so they could um, they could plant, they could care for the gardens and they could harvest that, that produce and use it later on in their cooking experiences. That is exactly what happens. Um, so this, this low level garden structure, um, it's in um, kind of a heartful place, if I can use that word, um, because all of the children in the other kindy classes are coming up as well to this space. They're able to plant, they're able to care for that garden without um, walking over the top of things and um, pulling other things out. So there's a real care and respect for what's happening in the gardens and they flourish. So um, we've, we've made um, kale chips um, to enjoy. We've made vegetable pasta, vegetable pizzas, tomato soup. Uh, lots of things have come um, from, our, from our garden. And you can see um, that low level bench. That was something that I, I just kept saying, I, I want the low level bench, I have to have that bench. I want the children to have that feeling I'm at, I'm at home. Um, I'm engaging with my kitchen, with my family. Uh, I'm cooking from the garden at home. Or I'm cooking from the things that mum's bought for me to cook with. So um, that that has been a joy and it's, and it's working beautifully, so much so that I am going to lower the benches um, 
in uh, the other classrooms so that we can have that same community interaction. And there are times when uh, we open the side gates to that, that community kitchen and we can say to a child, um, can you go and get the pot holder out of the bottom drawer? So they, they walk around into the kitchen, they take the pot holder out and they come back around and then they're giving it to their teachers. So they have that accessibility. We have risk assessments, of course, for that, um, but it's designed the way it's meant to function. Um, and the children are having a lot of joy from working in, the, in their community kitchen. Um, you can see here um, children are harvesting um, their own crops as well and it has a real community feel. So we have um, families that um, well, when they were in our kindy and not during COVID, um, but when they were in kindy, they would walk past these gardens and they'd say, oh, this is Damod or they'd say to the children, oh, I can see lots of button squash. Um, maybe we could ask, can we take some home some for dinner? So now we have our brown paper bags um, just there at the ready so the children, when they when they see some uh, some crops emerging and flourishing and they're plentiful, um, they'll cut their own, they'll take them home and they'll join them for dinner. And that comes back to the community. So the children will take a video and show us or some photographs or, or share the dialogue. The families will write us an email and, and tell us what's been happening. So um, so the learning that um, has has occurred from, from this new structure continues on at home and then it comes back to us and, um, and this cycle just keeps happening. So, to say um, I'm more than delighted um, with, with the function of our space probably is an understatement. Um, it has really embedded um, our service philosophy um, of the child being a competent and capable learner. And I yeah. hope you can, you can see that just from the stories that I've been telling you and, and the photos that you can see. Um, it really has afforded the children these endless encounters um, with their environment to create different possibilities and, and to engage in investigations um, and inquiry learning. Uh, they're representing their understanding in many different ways and, and that is visible to um, our community, to our families and to the children themselves to revisit their work. So I'm deeply thankful, deeply appreciative um, of the work and the time that's been invested in this project. And, uh, and, and sometimes we, we all talk about um, um, giving children voices, giving families voices, giving community voices, but this is really in action here. So throughout this whole project, um, all of those stakeholders were involved. And um, so when they're all involved, magic happens. So that's the magic. Nice. Um, so I'm, uh, you know, I said I could talk forever. Um, I'm going to hand back to Kevin now. So if anyone's got any questions, um, Kevin's going to facilitate that part for us. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for that. It's, it's wonderful to see the, um, the, the, the process that you, you took as a team. It's, you could, it really shows and, and how you've taken your concepts and turned them into reality. And you can see how, how it's helping with all those senses for the children. And, and then sharing those last slides, Leanne, was just wonderful to, to see the smiles on the kids' faces. and. Um, yeah, you know, we're, we're pretty fortunate up here in Queensland that our kids can go out and do water play, take their shoes off, feel the stones under their feet and the, and the leaves and the sand. Um, so we, we, are, we are lucky and, and fortunate. Um, just, a, 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 I suppose, a question that I'll, I'll start off with. Um, there are a, a few questions coming up. Um, one thing I've noticed with, with kindies is that, um, you know, children do get to explore all their senses and... Um, and through that um, that play based learning, there's different lots of different personalities that are trying to find themselves. And John Paul College, also you've got the kindy and you transition up into um, into primary school. And, and what what process does John Paul College play in that? Do, do the kids still carry on that um, that sensory um, uh, um, interaction as they move up through the school? Also, there comes a point where you know, yes, yeah. So, um, do you want, would you like me to ask? Yeah, yeah. you go first. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, I've, they, they most certainly do. So, um, the children in kindergarten, um, the majority of our kindergarten children transition on into our prep at John Paul College. And when um, we spend a lot of time in our, in our prep environment, um, it has been uh, renovated um, to reflect the journey that the children have had um, in kindergarten, so that there is some connection for those children when they move on into the kindergarten. So. 
So those opportunities and the way the environment is set up and the way um, the program is planned is quite reflective of what happens um, in the in, in the kindergarten setting. And then again, um, when you move into the, the year one classrooms, there's an, there's an effect of change that is happening. Um, our prep playground had a new redesign, so now it's a nature-based playground. So those metal structures and things like that have disappeared and there's ropes to climb on, um, there's logs um, that you can move. Um, and the college, then in the wider college, we have um, what we call Finch Farms. So that engagement and connection back to nature again and um, more community gardens and our chickens our bush uh, kindy play spaces up there. So there's lots of connections continually being made across the college for the children to engage with all of their senses. So um, wholeheartedly, I'm going to say yes. yes. Yeah. I don't know if Pam wants to add anything to that. Yeah, I, yeah absolutely. I mean, um, what was quite interesting is that at a similar time that we were doing this project, we were also undertaking a master plan of the broader campus and, um, as part of that, we did a series of workshops as well. They involved Ben Cleveland, who might even be in the audience. I'm not sure. Shout out to you, Ben. Um, but, but what was really interesting is that a lot of the things that were coming out of um, the kindy in terms of the, the connection to nature, um, the materiality and texture are all completely relevant to um, not just early learning, but primary and secondary and, and, and actually tertiary, tertiary learning as well. So... Um, when we unpacked it, we thought, well, actually, there's lots of good material to work with here in, in other levels of the education system. And so we started to reflect that in some of the thinking um, in, the, in the broader master plan as well. And um, we're certainly applying some of those principles in our other education work um, at other year levels. So, yeah, no, it's, um, it, it, I, think it's, I think it's critical for all those years. Yes. Um, there was a question about, um, Leanne, is there, is there an urge for the, the educators to tidy up around the space like, or do they stand back and let the kids' creations remain there while they, they finish them off over the days and weeks? So you're welcome to come and have a visit because um, it, it can I mean, be... Yeah, we're all coming. <laughs> um, it can be it can be busy. It can be what people would term as messy, but um, that is the children's work. So we know we don't go around tidying up. The children have a respect for the space, though. So the organisation of the space um, defines to the children. You know, when I'm finished using um, my materials, I, I will put it back in that space for someone else to use. They have. They have ownership of that. So they know that I'm going to wash up my paint pots and, and put them back. I'm going to clean up my, um, my clay space. Um, we don't tidy that up because if we tidy it up and reorganise what the children were working on, then it's not their space. So it will look different to them. So the children are in charge of them. We will just ask them to um, have a look around. Is there anything that you're not using at the moment? Let's put that back on the shelves. You know, they'll sweep the floors underneath and, and then tidy up as best they can. So, you know, everyone's got a cleaner that comes in at the end of the day. Um, but if they've got work that is ongoing, it is left there. If it's clay, it's covered so that it doesn't dry out, so they can return to it the next day. Um, but it is left there because that, that's their work and that's the respect that we give to children. So no, no pressure. We've, we've worked, like I said, 17 years at John Paul College. We've worked on uh, a lot of our, our, our practice and uh, are quite proud of, of the programs that we have for children. Yeah. <laughs> I'm passionate about early childhood, so uh, you know anyone can ask me any question. It's joyful. Um, just a, just another question from from one of the um, participants is: Could you describe the role of the teachers in the um, Reggio Emilia um, environment? So um, the the teachers work alongside the children. So yeah. there are there are times yeah. when um, we are very in, intentional um, in the work that we do, and, and we do skill building. So we will explicitly teach them how to use um, different materials so that they've got those skills to um, join clay. Um, they've got the skills to bend the wire to make it safe to use. So um, we do do lots of work with the children, like um, it was in the intro and Cam mentioned, um, very much an arts-based program where um, it's reflecting the children's understanding and thinking. Um, but we work alongside the children. So um, always exploring um, the possibilities with children instead of giving the answers we, we find out. So um, someone got stung by a bee 
um, the other day and uh, it has generated a, a little bit of an, a, a project about bees and, and why they're singing and uh, the children are driving that project because they're actually um, bringing things in from home um, to show other children and uh, someone has taught them about a drone bee now so um, uh, they want to know more so uh, the teachers are working alongside the children so there is um uh, if I'm talking to the teaching, the teaching um, participants at the moment, um, we have um, our intentions that we have for children, so that so that is planned for them. But there is always space for the children's own inquiries and um, investigations to be added to that that planning. But we work alongside the children, scaffolding um, the learning that's happening, um, providing that provocation when it's needed. Um, maybe adding a book for research when we consider the child's really, really interested. So um, it's, a, it's things like that. Um, everyone's welcome to come for a visit. <laughs> come in all next year. Yes. <laughs> Not right now, next year. Uh, um, just mindful of time. Um, so there's a few, I mean, Kevin, there's a few questions I notice in the feed just around, you know, compliance and, and, and workplace health and safety. And I think they're actually really important questions because um, we have to grapple with that with all of our projects. And um, there's actually a lot of thought that needs to go into that part of the process to get those outcomes. Um, and so um, with respect to the borough, for example, you know, there's immediately it kind of draws up a question, well, is that equitable? Because, because if you have somebody who has a, has a mobility challenge, then can they access that? So interestingly, the kindy had always had um, multiple levels within the kindy facility. And, um, and that was partly because um, to create environments that um, are not dissimilar to the environments that children will be encountering at home, but also in urban environments. So one way that we were able to incorporate that with the borough was the two rooms are different, um, but, but offer um, equivalent facilities. So um, the nest room is fully accessible. So if you do have somebody who needs a fully accessible space, they can be in that nest classroom and they get the full experience um, as you do in the borough. Um, so that was that was kind of quite important. And there was also a lot of detail to work through with the kitchen space. So to make a kitchen space so that so that it actually is visually accessible to the children um, and is something that they can engage with. Um, there was actually an incredible amount of thought that had to go into that um, in terms of where you put gates, where you don't put gates how you manage a lower bench, how you manage children not being able to jump over that. Um, and also just on the end side, just in terms of um, just all of the safe work plans that go along with that to support it. So we did do a lot of work um, with Leanne and her team just around making sure we we're setting up a complementary environment with complementary work plans to deliver those sort of multiple outcomes. So. Um, so I think that's worth sharing because I know there are a lot of other architects that are um, in the room and sometimes those little gems are kind of useful for you to use on your other projects. I know I'm always really interested to hear that from um, some of the other professionals that we work with too. Well, the timber bench almost didn't get certified, right? Yeah, so, um, so there's, um, for the architecture, we know there are classifications of materials that you have to have within those space and um, we need to be aiming for lower levels of flammability and that really um, limits what you can do with walls and ceilings, but, um, but it still does leave open opportunities for the way you might use materiality in furniture. Um, and so we extended that to a lot of the joinery items in the space. So we were able to achieve compliance, but at the same time kind of introduce those natural materials. And um, once again, that took a lot of work with the certifiers to, um, to get that outcome that was, was comfortable in the certification sense and was providing a safe environment, but still providing that natural complexity in the material. Um, I'll ask this last question. Was it um, green star or um, certification on the project? No, we didn't, we didn't go through a, any environmental accreditation on it. Um, the school at the time is looking more broadly at the campus. So often in a larger campus, you know, you're looking at um, 
uh, green accreditation as a campus as a whole. Um, and that's just simply because um, it's probably not so much an issue for solar because you can do that on multiple buildings, but when it comes to water management, um, you might have buildings that are collecting and using water, but then an oval which is using, you know, hundreds of gallons of water every week. So, um, so you do actually need in those situations a, a campus-wide uh, approach to it. Um, so that's something that we've explored more through the master plan than through the individual project. Um, but the kindy does have a rainwater tank that collects rainwater um, so that that can be part of uh, at least a learning experience for the children about where water comes from, where it goes to and how it might be relevant. Wonderful. All right, um, we might um, leave then and say thank you to Leanne, Cameron and Magnum. Um, clap, virtual clap across the, uh, across the net. Um, also, also like to, uh, again, thank our, our long-term sponsors with uh, Woods Furniture and Interface. Um, I've got a bit of housekeeping to go through for the uh, Queensland chapter. Um, just to let everyone know that the um, LEA Queensland chapter awards are coming up for nomination. So please consider your organisations, your projects, your people. Um, information will be emailed out um, shortly on the categories and how to enter and nominate. Um, we also have our AGM meeting coming up on the 20th of October. We are looking for nominations for our committee in Queensland. So please um, reach out to the committee or our lovely chair, Julie Saunders. Uh, we'll be happy to um, take your nominations. Uh, our last event for the year is going to be um, held at the Fortitude Valley um, State Secondary College, uh, where that will also uh, be where we'll hold the um, award ceremony and do a tour of the school that was designed by Cox. Um, so uh, the, tonight's presentation, uh, that will be emailed out to everyone that's registered tonight. Um, so um, yeah, thank you very much for everyone's, everyone's time. Um, us Queenslanders miss everyone in every other state and we look forward to seeing your faces very soon. Um, so have a great evening and thanks again to our wonderful speakers.